Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the last pattern, that is the data virtualization. So this is the last theory topic I'm going to talk about it. I understand that theory can be boring, but it's important at the same time because I wanted to cover this at the end so that I can take over uh, the Salesforce Connect from the next episode, right? So this is the right place to talk about this data virtualization. So why do we need a data virtualization uh, design pattern, right? So think about a scenario where you wanted to see an external data inside the Salesforce uh, without bringing the data into the Salesforce. So for instance, uh, you wanted to, so let me, I try it here. So this is Salesforce, okay, and uh, and this is an external uh, system. So okay, external system could be SAP or Oracle or whatever, right? External that external system, um, right? So let's say an external legacy system, right? Uh, do you you wanted to uh, so they maintain say. Uh, product information, okay? So they maintain something called, uh, let's say products, uh, millions of products, okay, for instance. Uh, and you wanted to see this uh, product information uh, real time in Salesforce, okay? Um, but you do not want the product information to be brought into Salesforce because imagine if you got a million uh, of record, right? You don't want that data to be brought into the Salesforce because it's a data duplication, right? Because you have a data in external system and the last thing you wanted to bring all of this stuff to the Salesforce, okay? So that's where uh, Salesforce Connect comes to the picture. That's where this design pattern is very important. Now, you got to ask a few questions, right? Before you choose any of the, the right solution for it. So the first thing is that you have to ask, do you want it to build a point and click outbound message system in Salesforce? Or do you want, do you have a large amount of data that you want to copy into Salesforce or uh, do you need to access small amount of remote system data at any one time? Do you need real time access to the latest data? Do you store data in the cloud or in back of a system but wants to display or process the data in your Salesforce org? Okay. So if your if if your response is like, look, I wanted to deal with a small amount of data, I don't want it to bring massive amount of data, I don't want it to store the data, I only wanted to query the data, view the data, and like it's as if it's a part of a Salesforce data. Okay. So in that case, uh, so what will be the best fit technology we're going to use in this case, right? So let me put it in the old hash. This is a very small lecture, but it's important you understand, right? Because it will, if you're an architect, right, it helps you decide what pattern to go with. Because if you end up in choosing a wrong technology or wrong pattern, right, then you have to do a lot of patchwork to get, make it work, right? Which is not really great. So, um, and you can say sub... Oh, uh, optimal system, so uh, you can say not a great fit. Uh, optimal, right? So this is the one. Okay, so I'll put it here. So, um, so the first thing, okay, we talk about the Salesforce Connect. Okay, Salesforce Connect. Uh, I'm gonna do demo about Salesforce Connect next time. Right, so this is not a demo session, right? This is just an architecture discussion session, so bear with me. Um, so, so if you're looking after the best solution, then Salesforce Connect is the best solution. Uh, we should go for it. Now, Salesforce Connect, using Salesforce Connect, right, you can access the data from external source along with your Salesforce data, okay? So you can, uh, like I said, in our scenario, we have an external system. I wanted to pull the product data to the Salesforce. You can use um, using uh, the Salesforce Connect without actually making a copy of the data in the Salesforce, okay? Uh, so Salesforce data, Salesforce Connect, right, usually maps data tables in an external system uh, to an external object, okay? so. It, we, in Salesforce, we make use of something called external objects, right? So that's where the Salesforce, uh, that's where you map your external data, okay? 
Um, so they are pretty much similar to custom objects. If you ask me what are external objects, they're pretty much similar, but except a few limitations, right? Um, and Salesforce Connect use a live connection to an external data to always keep external object up to date. That's why I was saying that if you wanted to have the real time data in your org uh, without copying it, then you should use the Salesforce Connect. Okay, now uh, Salesforce Connect let you do many things right you can query your data you can query the data in an external system okay you can you can query it okay you can create update and delete the data in an external system you can do CRUD operation in simple terms um, so you can also use uh, if you wanted to view the external objects right you can use the list view so this is a list view uh, you can also use the, the page layout as well Right, and you can also define the relationship between an external objects and a standard or a custom object to integrate uh, data from a different source. That's also possible, right? Because you can um, always um, make a build, you know, relationship. Okay, um, so you can also run a report on external uh, data because at times your business might need to see the data. Like in this case, they might want to run a data on the product information that's available. So since the product gets stored in external object, right? So you can run a report on external objects, okay? Um, so the Salesforce data, you can access the data using cross org adapter. You can use OData2, OData4 adapter, right? So, um, so in that case, you need to have, uh, you need to have a so, uh, source which supports OData and or two or four producer, okay? You can also create your own custom adapter using an Apex, which we're gonna do eventually, right? Where you can write your own Apex adapter to do that, okay? So which is very powerful if you think that uh, out of box cross org adapter or OData 2 or OData 4 is not giving you what you're after, then you can always build your own custom adapter. Right, so that's the Salesforce Connect. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward, right? Nothing fancy there. Now, if you look, there's one more option, uh, which is called request and apply. So I presume you know request and apply by now. Yeah. So there's another solution, request and apply, which is uh, unfortunately not a great solution, which is a suboptimal solution here. So you can uh, pretty much use the Salesforce API to make an ad hoc data request to access and update external system data, which is possible. You can use Salesforce API or you can use the REST API or you can use the, the SOAP API to do that, okay? So usually, you know, you can build a custom, you know, Visual Force page or Lightning component uh, to initiate a, you know, call out in a synchronous manner because it's a synchronous operation, right? And so, so uh, usually if you're using uh, so if you use the Vistal, right? And you can consume a Vistal and generate a resulting proxy Apex class, right? In Salesforce, if you have used SOAP. Um, and then if you are using a REST, you can use the standard get, post, uh, put, and delete methods, right? Um, to do the meaningful operation, okay? Now, um, so like I said, um, uh, you know, there are, you know, you can use external objects or you can use the visual uh, a page or lightning component. Now, error handling is very important. So let me, as you, as I always mention in integration, error handling plays a very critical role, right? So it's important to include, right, the error handling as a part of overall solution like I was talking about, because usually what happens when an error happens, right, exceptions or error codes are returned to the caller, uh, the caller manages the error handling. Okay, so Salesforce got one tool, um, which is actually called Salesforce Connect Validator. So it's a, it's a free tool. Um, probably, um, I think I spelled it correctly. All right, so this is a um, this is a free tool uh, to run some you know common queries and notice error types and failure causes. Just check it out. You know, if you want, I can put the link in the description below. All right. So now, why do we need an error handling, right? Because there's some of the benefits, right, of using. Uh, see, the error handling is very critical, right? I mean, if you are if you are a uh, a developer, right, or if you're not integration architect, 
you need to know what happens if the connection breaks. Okay, what happens, you know, if integration fails? What happens to the data in transit? So those those kind of questions you have to ask yourself, right? You need to keep those into consideration. Now, um, why do we decide to go with the Salesforce Connect? Like, what is the, the real advantage? I understand that Salesforce Connect offers you a, a way of you know viewing the external data within the Salesforce without making a copy. Okay, so so the first thing is that you know, because, like I said, it's not going to make a copy, right? It it uh, will not consume a data storage in Salesforce. Okay. And now you don't also have to worry about, you know, syncing data between external system and Salesforce. Salesforce Connect does that for you automatically, right? Um, so the users can access external data with much of the same functionality uh, as custom object, okay, in the form of external object, which I talked about it. Um, you can also do a search in the connected external system using global search. Uh, reports you can do, right? But the... Bear in mind that reports can be slower. Um, so external, because that's the one of the thing you have to keep into consideration, right? Because external object can slow down the report. So that's one thing you have to, um, so you can use cross org adapter or you can use all data adapter or custom apex adapter. You have to understand the limitation of each and all if you're going that route. So just read about it if you're interested. Um, so this is, like I said, you know, this is one of the design patterns. So this is technology we're going to use. Um, so the security plays a very important role as well. Uh, so it should adhere to the standard Salesforce org level security. Okay. Uh, so it's always recommended that you use HTTPS protocol to connect to any, any remote system. Okay. So error handling, security, they go side by side. So like I said, you, you always use Salesforce org level security, right? And HTTPS protocol. Okay, and if you're uh, using um, all data connector, so you have to understand the limitations and you know recommendation as well. So because before you choose any adapter, right, you have to read the limitations and advantages offers, right? Just don't go with the flow, right? Oh, okay, I want to use Salesforce Connect. I'm gonna use all data adapter. If you have an option, right, so you have to understand the pros and cons. Um, this pattern, right, is uh, is usually used for the small uh, volume real-time activities due to the small timeout value and maximum size of request. So the, like I said, that if I, I talked about it in the very beginning, that if you're after the small data volume, then this pattern will do the job very well. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is one of the things, like I said, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, and you can also do complex integration with it right um if you want you can use a middleware as well uh, but it's not usually required but if you're using a middleware just please make sure that it handles even handling protocol conversion uh and it should do translation and transformation uh it should do queuing and buffering it should support uh synchronous transfer protocol which is important and it should also support uh, trans, uh, encryption and transaction management and signing a reliable delivery. It's very important. Okay. Now, like I said, you can also make a relationship between the standard um, and, um, and a custom object using an external object, which is pretty cool. So you should check that out as well. Um, if you are after high data volume, you can also use it. And um, so, you know, like there is a consideration, which like the high data volume consideration uh, for all data too and for adapters, right? So if you're org, right, if it hits the rate limit for whatever reason, when, I, when accessing external object, consider selecting the high data volume option in the associated external data source, okay? Which is very important. So what that will do is that it will bypass the most rare limits uh, the rate limit, sorry, uh, but some typical behavior and limitation applies, which you have to read about, okay? So that's why I said, I mean, I would love to demonstrate this to you guys next time. So this is just a theory session, which is pretty much I wanted to talk about it 
and this is right uh, because you have to understand why we need to use the Salesforce Connect in the first place, right? So as you know, this is the Salesforce Connect fits in this design pattern very well. Um, we talked about other patterns as well because uh, the pattern actually makes you choose the right technology when you're implementing a solution, right? And you need to understand the caveats and, and the things that's involved. So yeah, that's pretty much I wanted to talk about it. Um, and yeah, so next time, you know, we're gonna jump in and do hands-on. Yeah. So that that being said, you guys have a great Saturday. Take care. Bye bye.